The Columbus Chill will open their initial hockey season in 15 days on the road against Roanoke. Today, the Chill signed their first player, right wing Jason Christie. The 22-year-old has played five seasons at the professional level and brings a scrappy playing style to Columbus. Even though he's only 5'7", he knows he can play with the big boys in the rough and tough East Coast Hockey League. Tell you, the harder the hits, the harder the fans yell, and uh, I guarantee there's going to be a lot of that this year. And uh, one thing, there's going to be a lot of hustle, a lot of work, and if we have to go through a brick wall, I think our team will. The Columbus Chill hockey season gets underway in 15 days on the road against Roanoke. The home opener, November 1st against Erie. Today, the Chills signed their first player, Jason Christie. The 22-year-old right winger has played five seasons of pro hockey, and he's happy to be in Columbus. And uh, I think we could have a good year, year here with this Columbus Chill. And uh, in the office and right from the trainer all the way up to the general manager to the owner, they're uh, 100%. The secretary, she's even great, you know. Hockey right winger Jason Christie became the first player to sign a contract with the new Columbus Chill hockey team today. Christie played under Chill head coach Terry Ruskowski two years ago in the Western Hockey League. He's not huge. He's 5'7", 182 pounds. But Ruskowski says Christie is a scrappy player. The season will start November 1st at home against Erie. They're playing out at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. Be looking forward to that. So far, no contract. Finally, the Columbus Chill continues its training camp in Indianapolis this week. The opening day is just eight days away. And as you can imagine, trying to start a team from scratch has presented a huge challenge for Coach Terry Ruskowski. He's uh, had to acquire, he has to acquire seven Americans for the squad. He's got players in here from all over the world, including Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union. But so far, what does he think? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I think that we're going to have a real pretty good team. Uh, some guys haven't, they're not in shape yet, and some guys haven't skated for a long period of time. But in general, they look pretty good, and I think once we get some ice uh, under our belt and play some games and have some scrimmages out here, I think the guys will come along real fine. They're going to open on the road next week. He's hurting so bad for Americans, Lou. He's asking about what your and my status was. <laughs> Retired. <laughs> He's okay. Columbus's own professional hockey team hit the ice today, gearing up for this week's home opener. The Columbus Chill practice at the OSU ice rink this morning. They've already played three games on the road, winning one and losing the other two in the East Coast Hockey League. The Chill go up against the Erie Panthers Friday at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. The Columbus Chill is the first minor league pro hockey team since the Owls of the six. The new Ice Age is coming to Columbus this Friday. The Columbus Chill Hockey Team has an East Coast Hockey League home opener. Before you have hockey, you have to have ice. And since the Quarter Horse Congress has gone from the Fairgrounds Coliseum, the ice is taking over. Workers have been putting down all those coils for the refrigerant today. They hope to start making the ice by midnight or so, and it'll be ready for skating with the first home game Friday with Erie, Pennsylvania. Not Erie, Indiana. Yeah, the Erie Panthers, I think they're called. We're <laughs> yeah. the Columbus Chill, right? right incidentally, while the uh, ice is uh, being made over there, the Chill is practicing at the OSU ice rink at 6.45 in the morning. Oh, man. <laughs> That's too early to practice for any hockey game. But that'll wake you up in a quick hurry. All and just add water and chill. That's about all that's left to uh, getting Columbus's new hockey team at the state fairground. Columbus Chill opens its inaugural home schedule Friday night at the Coliseum. Gets the Erie, Pennsylvania team. We're going to go live now to Daryl Collins at the Coliseum where they are preparing to make the ice. Well, Doug, the Columbus Chill plays in the East Coast Hockey League. And I overheard some people talking earlier today and they say this facility may be one of the nicest in that league. Now, if you can imagine, this entire floor was covered with dirt earlier today for the American Quarter Horse Congress. Well, they've gotten the dirt up, and they've begun adding water, and in just a matter of hours, we should be ready to play some hockey. This cooling element resembles something you'd find in your icebox at home, only in a much larger scale. A 200 by 85 foot mat of plastic tubing, through which a chemical they call EnviroChill will be pumped, and then lowered down to about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. The system's designer, John Burley of Burley's Rink Supply, says this unit is completely portable and can be ready for play in about eight hours. We'll flood the piping system first, that layer, layer of water that you'll turn ice. After that's done, we actually paint the ice. We paint the ice with a biodegradable powder that's uh, mixed with water. And we spray that down, and it'll actually make it white, build a little bit more ice up, we'll put our red or blue lines down, maybe a few logos, and we're ready for a hockey night. Sand has been packed around the edges. It'll be saturated and frozen first to keep the sides from leaking. 
It'll take about 15,000 gallons of water to make up the two-inch thick ice surface. However, this instant ice rink isn't down for good. It'll have to be lifted for other events scheduled for the Coliseum. And with 32 home games scheduled, workers should become quite adept at installing the floor. Ticket prices are $9 a game, or $250 for an adult season pass. Students can get a season ticket for $160. There are many season ticket packages available at $99 for 13 games for adults and $65 for students. Now they say the ice should be ready by about uh, noon tomorrow, so hopefully we'll be able to come back and show you what it looks like. Now, as we told you earlier, they play Erie Friday night at 8 o'clock, and on Saturday night, there's another home game against the Louisville squad. So plenty of opportunities to come out here and see the chill, Doug. Okay, Darrell. Thank you very much. Jimmy Crum uh, has the uh, team uh, working out. Uh, he also has Buckeye coach John Cooper. And the Columbus Chill worked out for the first time in the capital city this morning, holding their early morning session at the Ohio State Ice Rink. The team worked out in Indianapolis during preseason and has played three games on the road, going one and two. Columbus opens the season Friday night at the Fairgrounds Coliseum against Erie. Tickets are still available at all Ticketmaster locations. The Chill is the first pro hockey team to play in Columbus in almost two decades. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of crowds they got, because at one time we got some pretty good crowds out of the Fairgrounds for the Owls and, and some of those teams. Okay. All right, so this is not the first time they've had No, this is not the first time. Okay. Yeah, just so you think the life of a pro athlete is glamorous? Well, you'd think twice if you had to work on the schedule the Columbus Chill players are putting in this week. They were on the ice at 6.45 this morning, as they have been each day this week. Coach Terry Ruskowski's squad then got on a bus this afternoon, bound for Toledo, where they will play a game tonight. That is a long day. Meanwhile, laborers, uh, workers labored through the night all day uh, and all night last night, getting the ice ready for the Fairgrounds Coliseum, where the Chill will play their home opener Friday night. Doesn't look like ice yet, but they put a thin layer of water down over a sand base. They freeze it, they paint it, they freeze it, and then they put another layer down. They put the lines on with a sort of tissue paper, and they will freeze it again with a thick layer of ice. A lot of work to get ready for Friday night's home opener. Meanwhile... The Columbus Chill played its final game before Friday night's home opener. Uh, in, they were playing in Toledo tonight. Outcome was not too good. Toledo hammered Columbus 9-2. to Earlier today at 6, we told you that the Columbus had been uh, chill, had to practice at 6.45 all this week because that's the only time they can get ice time. They were practicing this morning at 6.45. Obviously a pretty tired bunch there as 9-2 to was the final. Meanwhile, preparations for that home opener continued at the Fairgrounds Coliseum today as workers painstakingly prepared the ice surface. The chill will host Erie Friday night at 8 o'clock and the team is urging fans to wear white on opening night. And it the Columbus Chill plays its first home game tomorrow night at the Fairgrounds Coliseum, but the team lost center Jason Taylor for the rest of the season today. The ECHL suspended Taylor for the remainder of the season because last Friday in a game against Hampton Roads, Virginia, Taylor swung his stick with both hands at the Admiral's Harry Muse, breaking Muse's jaw. League officials say they hope the severity of the penalty gives notice to other players in the league it won't stand for that kind of conduct. And it Tonight, the coolest show in town is at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. The Columbus Chill Hockey Team open their season tonight. Daryl Collins is with the team as they warm up. The first home game tonight, right, Daryl? That's right, Gail. You know, they haven't had hockey here in Columbus since about 1977. Wow. And people seem to be truly excited about this sport coming to town. They've sold about 5,900 seats for tonight's game. They've got about 200 uh, single seats scattered throughout the arena. Plus, they've got standing room only, so um, if you act fast, you can get your tickets. <laughs> um, with me right now is one of the players, Kurt Samandel, and you're a defenseman for the team. How does it feel being um, part of a, a brand spanking new team? Uh, it's very exciting. You know, you come to an exciting uh, city like Columbus, and everybody's excited. Uh, uh, the team, personally, uh, we're excited to be at home and uh, start to get the season going at home. Now, you guys have been on the road for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. We've been on the road for about three weeks. Uh, we played three road games, uh, and uh, we've been home for about three days. So it's exciting to get home and uh, see what kind of support we can get at home. Um, you won your first game, and you you're, must be anxious to get back on the winning track. Exactly. Uh, I, I talked to you earlier about uh, um, road games. Uh, road games are tough to win in this league, and at home is where we have to win. So with the support that it sounds like we're going to get tonight, it should be an exciting game. All right. Well, good luck to you. And over on my right side, 
Um, Dave Payton, the president of the team, it must be um, exciting for you as well. Yeah, exciting and nervous. You know, first night, opening night, new building with a lot of new things going on. And yeah, it's great. We have had a great uh, response from the community. I think there's a lot of hockey fans here in, in Columbus, and uh, we just it looks like we're going to have a standing room only crowd. All right. Well, good luck to you tonight. Um, tonight at 8 o'clock, Gail, the Columbus Chill against the Erie Panthers. Also a game tomorrow against the good Louisville squad here at 8 o'clock. Yeah, it looks like they've done quite a transformation to put that into an ice rink formation. <laughs> oh, it looks fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. Okay. When Columbus opens the East Coast Hockey League campaign tonight at the Fairgrounds Coliseum against Erie, the first player signed by the Chill will try to make a good impression on the home crowd. He's team captain and right winger Jason Christie, who played with head coach Terry Ruskowski two years ago. Jason, thanks for joining us. How you doing? The club's off to a one and two start after Wednesday night's nine to two loss to Toledo. Realistically, what kind of a year do you see for the Chill? Actually, I think we're uh, we're a big competitive team. You know, we uh, we got big defensemen on the back, and uh, our forwards were uh, were small, but we're quick, and uh, we won't stop for nothing. Having played with Terry Ruskowski a couple of years ago, do you have a better idea than some of the other players about what he's trying to do? Actually, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little easier on my part, but, uh, you know, we've been together for a while here now, so, uh, you know, the guys are starting to get used to him, and, and they're all coming together, and, you know, he, the way he plays, he's coaching with the same feeling as heart, and, uh, you know, you go out and work hard for him, things will happen. Final question. Someone told me that your nickname is Smurf. If it's true, how'd you get the nickname? Actually, I, uh, I got one in my junior days. I, uh, a couple guys on the team, you know, I was the smallest. I've always been the smallest on the team, so uh, they gave me the name, nickname Smurf. So I, I went and got a little uh, Smurf tattooed on my uh, chest. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, congratulations. Good luck, and good luck through the season. Thanks a lot, Jim. We we uh, don't need our ice storm in Columbus tonight. We have our own ice at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. That's right. And Daryl Collins is there for the home debut of the Columbus Chill. Now, that's the city's new minor league hockey team. Daryl. Well, Tom and Angelo, for the first time since 1977, pro hockey will be played here in the capital city as the Columbus Chill prepares to open up their 91-92 home schedule here at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. Now, throughout the season, there'll be 32 home games here on the home ice, and um, we're hoping tonight to get back on the winning track. The Columbus Chill is a member of the East Coast Hockey League, and in that league right now, they're one and two. The first win coming, the first game of the season against the uh, Hampton, Virginia team. Now, with me is a player who I'm sure can't wait to get on the ice tonight brad trailing a defenseman for the team and this must be exciting for you guys as well yeah it's been a long time coming uh we opened up camp about two and a half three weeks ago and uh all the guys are pretty pumped to get that first home game and uh it's finally here and uh all the guys i know back in the room there are just raring to go now you say it's important tonight to give the fans a great show out here yeah you know they've had hockey here before and uh what I've been told tonight is we got a sold out uh, building, so what we want to do is put on a good show for the fans here, you know, make them enjoy it, and hopefully they'll come back the rest of the year and support us and uh, go from there. All right, well, good luck to you tonight and your teammates, um, and uh, show, is, show is a good show tonight. Thanks very much, and we hope to. All right, and um, the uh, team that's marketing this squad is um, shown to have a great sense of humor. One of the uh, contests tonight, shooting frozen chickens into the goal across the ice, so it should be a fun time out here tonight. <laughs> Daryl, I'm so old, I remember hockey here before and like many cities Columbus has a core group of hockey fans may not be so big but I think what the chill has to do to be successful is to attract the non hockey fans maybe the people who like those contests like that frozen chicken contest and other promotions that go on that's right and I see a lot of young kids here tonight and hopefully they'll pick up on the sport and um, a lot of them hopefully will get the opportunity to play someday be one of these guys you know all right thanks a lot Daryl <laughs> Well, it's been 14 years since Columbus has had its own professional hockey team, and tonight, the Chill, the city's new team, began its 1991-92 home schedule at the Fairgrounds Coliseum, that before a sold-out crowd. The Chill is in the East Coast Ho Hockey League, and they are currently 1-3 in that league. Tonight, they took on the Panthers of Erie, Pennsylvania. During the break between the first two periods, 20 lucky people were chosen for a chance at $5,000 by shooting frozen chickens at a goal with a big slingshot. While well, a chance of $5,000 may have attracted some to the contest, as Daryl Collins explains, most were there to see hockey. If opening night is any indication, Central Ohioans are starved for professional hockey. They sold about 6,000 tickets to tonight's game. They even sold the standing room only seats around the top of the arena. Not since 1977 had a game been played here. 
That's when the old Columbus Owls went up against the Dayton Gems. We're glad to have hockey back. We're old-time hockey fans. That's playing with me. We've been season ticket holders when we had the Owls, so this isn't anything new for us. Four minutes into the first period came the moment a lot of people have been waiting for. Not the first goal, but the first fight. What do you think of the fight? I don't think that's part of the game. I think the show has to stop taking stupid penalties and play hockey. So you think there's too much fighting? No, I didn't say that. I think hockey's good for the crowd, but I think we should see some hockey here, too. But there was no mistaking the Chills' first home goal being scored. How this kid could sleep, I have no idea. Hockey fans will have 31 more opportunities to cheer on the chill this season. Tomorrow night, they take on Louisville at the Fairgrounds Coliseum, beginning at 8 o'clock. Daryl Collins, News 4, Columbus. Let's go to the ice. Hockey's back in Columbus to chill with their home opener tonight against Zuri. A sellout crowd on hand to watch. Columbus down two zip when Jim Valentine passes to Mark Cipriano. He beats the Panther defense and scores the Chills' first home goal. It's two to one. But here he comes right back with a goal of its own. Don Batten will set up and score from the outside. The game is now in the third period. Columbus leads Erie five to four. Nice. Mark Cooper is live tonight at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. Where professional hockey is coming back to Columbus. Hi, Mark. Hi, thanks a lot. Yeah, hockey's coming back tonight and in a big way. The Columbus Chill home opener tonight is sold out. They're selling standing room only tickets here at the Coliseum already. So that means at least 5,500 on hand and probably uh, a few more squeezed into the cracks here as the Chill has its first game at home. Terry Roskowski, the coach of the Chill, joins me. Terry, you guys have been on the road all the way through camp. You've been on the road for your first three games. Some opening night jitters here all over again? Well, there certainly is. I know the first game that we had uh, on the road, even I had the jitters, but seeing uh, the whole uh, the place uh, packed tonight is going to be a great thrill. And I'm really kind of nervous to have the jitters, to tell you the truth. And I just hope that our players can respond and entertain these people at night. It's been about 14 years since we've had ice in the Coliseum, and uh, you saw some of the players when we came out taking a look uh, at the ice conditions. Still getting the hang of putting the ice down out here, aren't Well, there's, there's still some problems. With, there's wrinkles that we have to iron out before we get everything settled away. But uh, we have to do with what we have, and this is what we have to put up with. So we, uh, we're going to come up for pregame skate, and hopefully with the flood of the ice, everything will be smooth to start of the game, and we'll have no more uh, disruptions and just have a good, solid game for tonight. Terry, you lost your captain, Jason Taylor, for the season yesterday, a result of a stick-swinging incident last week down in, uh, in Virginia. Were you surprised at the severity of that penalty? Well, I knew it was going to be severe. Uh, uh, penalty on him, but I didn't think it was going to be that severe, uh, you know, a whole year suspension. It, uh, it could actually ruin a kid's career, even though that I know it was a bad incident to happen. Uh, and we were set for a, a stiff penalty, but this was uh, more than we expected, to tell you the truth. Okay, thanks a lot, Terry. Good luck tonight. Thanks, Opening night, 8 o'clock as the chill takes on Erie, Pennsylvania. We'll have highlights tonight at 11. Well, a record crowd turned out for the home opener of Columbus's new pro hockey team. Columbus Chill made its home debut at the State Fairgrounds Coliseum tonight to a sold-out crowd of more than 6,900 people. The first Columbus pro hockey team in 14 years. It is the fourth team in all, but never before have so many seats been sold. There were about as many brawls as goals scored. We'll have details on what happened later on in sports. If you didn't have to work, you would have been there, too. Oh, right? yes, definitely. <laughs> Chad... For the first time in 14 years, professional hockey was back in Columbus tonight. The Columbus Chill hosted the Erie Panthers in front of a packed house at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. 6,298 fans on hand. First period action, this is Erie's Peter Buckridge with a slap shot beating Chill goalie Kevin, Kevin Marion. Made it 1-0, and then a little later in the period, for the visitors, John Batten scores. It was 2-0, but the Chill got back. Uh, got a goal back before the end of the period. Winger Mark Cipriano breaks in on the goal there, and he scores. And we don't know really why, but this game is still going on. They just started the third period. Columbus has rallied to take a 5-4 lead. I know there were a lot of fights in the first period, and I know there were some problems with the ice, but it's still a mystery as why this game has taken three hours to this point. Still largest crowd in history of Columbus to see a pro hockey game here, 62-98. It's also... After a 14-year absence, pro hockey returns to the city. The Columbus Chill had their opening night at the fairgrounds. 
and it was a big hit on opening night with the fans. The place was packed. Standing room only sold as well. A record crowd for hockey in Columbus, 6,298. And there was plenty of action on the ice, too. Mark Cipriano of the Chill and White mixed it up with John Batten of the Erie Panthers. And moments later, there's another fight. Al Nova, Nova Kowski. Kowski, I'm sure by the time the season starts, I'll have all these names down. There were plenty of fights. There was plenty of hockey. It's late in the third period. The Chill leads 5-4. They had over 6,000 fans show up for the Chill's home opener last night. But not quite that many in this one, but it looked like a defensive struggle early on. It's uh, the uh, good save there on the stick side by Columbus's uh, Elaine Harvey. And then uh, Don Granado with the breakaway. And he shoots and tries to score, but Chris Clifford's there to stop the goal. Louisville opens things up later on. They go on to outskate to Columbus tonight, 7-2. to two. So the chill. The chill was supposed to have the day off, but after last night's 7-2 to two loss to Louisville, Columbus coach Terry Ruskowski called a little team practice today. In the East Coast Hockey League, they spend so much time in the penalty box, they order out for food. Last night, Kevin Alexander feeds Mark Cipriano. Columbus trails 2-1. to one. At the other end, excuse the trip by the Columbus defender. Martin Bergeron winds up. Louisville wins it 7-2, to two, and the chill go back to the drawing board. Okay. Well, after last night's game, I, I feel that we had a lot to work on. Defensively, moving the puck properly, uh, defensive coverage, and we're going to work it on power play a little bit, too. We, uh, we haven't been doing too well in that aspect, and, and if we want to be successful, our specialty teams have got to come up large because, obviously, there's going to be a lot of penalties called this league, and we have to, our specialty teams have got to be uh, in first class shape before we play anybody else. Johnstown in town Tuesday night against the Chill. I take a few days off, and I forget where the cameras are. A poor showing by the Columbus Chill prompted coach Terry Ruskowski to call an unscheduled practice. The hockey team lost to Louisville Saturday night 7-2. In the East Coast Hockey League, they spend so much time in the penalty box, they order out for food. Saturday night, Kevin Alexander feeds Mark Cipriano Columbus trails 2-1. At the other end, excuse the trip by the Columbus defender, Martin Bergeron winds up. Louisville wins it 7-2, and the Chill go back to the drawing board. Well, after last night's game, I, I feel that we had a lot to work on. Defensively, moving the puck properly, uh, defensive coverage, and we're going to work it on power play a little bit, too. We, uh, we haven't been doing too well in that aspect, and, and if we want to be successful, our specialty teams have got to come up large because, obviously, there's going to be a lot of penalties called this league, and we have to, our specialty teams have got to be uh, in first-class shape before we play anybody else. They'll get better. Uh-huh. Hockey in Columbus. Well... The Columbus Chill, they're the fastest game in town. They had their opener last Friday with a cool saxophone playing the national anthem. And then the game began against the Erie Panthers in front of a sellout crowd at the Coliseum. One of the highlights at halftime, people tried to win money by shooting frozen chickens across the ice and into the goal with a huge slingshot. <laughs> what will they think of next? Tonight up close and personal with the chill players. Cabot's live at the Fairgrounds Coliseum, but the players love this kind of weather. 20 degrees really does feel like hockey weather. It feels warm in here That's compared it. to outside. In fact, they love it. They love it. And just call me Cabot Lemieux. I love tonight. the outfit. You know, what do you think? Yeah, very good. Wait nice. till I tell you what went into this. I mean, it's amazing the amount of equipment they have to put on. We're going to do that a little bit. Right here with the coach, Terry Rakuskowski of the Columbus Chill. Thank you, Terry, for joining us and for letting me come out and actually wear a jersey. I hope I don't embarrass the You team look good here. in it. You look real good. Now you have to improve on your skiing a little bit, and you maybe uh, have a chance to team. You think so? I'm going to have to improve a whole lot, not just a little bit. Go ahead, guys. Let's see you throw on a few around there while we take a look at these. Now, these are five guys. Most of these are pretty young players at this level, yeah, at least. We are. Our average age is about 23, 22, so they're pretty young. What we do here is just a little warm-up drill. We usually have goaltenders in here. And Boy, they flick those pucks so fast into the net. Anybody ever clock those things? Well, a slap shot from the blue line uh, in the NHL goes 100 miles an hour by guys that can really shoot the puck. So these things really fly. That's like a fastball in the major leagues. That's like a, a blazing fastball in the major leagues, and I'm sure that... Uh, that's why some teeth are, are lost in this sport, right? Well, that's why goalies wear all that protection, too, because it's very dangerous for the goalies. Sometimes they can't even see the puck, and they're hoping it hits them. Now, this team here, I know you got a lot of guys. Some of these guys have played in this league before. Some of these guys are actually have been drafted with, with the big clubs and then sent down here to do some refining, I guess. We have three guys right now that are listed by Vancouver. 
uh, that are here with us now and try to uh, try to improve our team in, and try to prove themselves also next year or two that they can uh, be up there either playing with their farm team or the NHL team. Well, you know, in baseball, some of the guys chew tobacco, some more and more now chewing gum instead. That's always been a trademark. In this sport, it's tattoos, I understand. Is that right? <laughs> Apparently so. I'm not really familiar with all of them because I don't see them uh, in the locker room that often. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're in, they're in places that we're not going to show you, obviously, tonight. But I understand that most of the team have tattoos that kind of reflect their character. They got one player on here named the Smurf, nicknamed, and they got a Smurf with a hockey stick. In fact, I think you see him standing up there against the wall right now. He's, uh, a lot of these guys are huge, though. You don't think always of hockey players as big, but I was in the locker room, and they are, a lot of guys over 6'2", 6'3", they're huge players. Well, the game's gotten to be bigger and faster now, and these guys usually, uh, you know, way back when, when they were big, they couldn't skate that well, but now they're big and they can skate pretty well, so uh, it's, the game has changed a lot, so there's a lot more speed, a lot more motion in the game instead of just staying on your wing and do you have strict wide. discipline in terms of what you do i mean in terms of passing or is it every man for himself just shoot it when you get it well we like to get in a position where to shoot it in and that's what uh, we try to work on in practice we, uh, we try to pick the corners the top corners the lower corners because in the games that's where they're uh, the openings are for the players to shoot at that's where you're usually going to score goals so when we do these practices, we try to practice uh, going for the corners. And Terry should know he was a captain 10 of his 15 years playing in the World Hockey and the National Hockey League. That's exactly with, right. With a number of different teams, and uh, but now he's coaching, and as he, he says his goal is to see as many of these players as possible get up to the NHL. And you see this court? This is amazing. And by the way, shots courtesy tonight of hockey cam <laughs> Phil Schneid. Oh, Phil himself. Phil. Yeah, he played hockey in uh, high school, and so he's much more at home than I am out here. But uh, look at this court. This is a beautiful court. This is regulation size. And when we come back, we're going to show you how they turn this into ice, and they actually will just cover this over to play basketball games. Wow, they can sure do a lot. High tech. <laughs> High tech. Okay, Cabot. And when... Cabot, does Heather give you any household chores to do, like take out the garbage regularly? Or... Uh, in fact, I did the other day, and you know... <laughs> the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I did last month. I did my job, okay? No, I do. I do, I do tasks. I, I clean off the table. You've got to get all excited here. I did laundry for about a month while she had a sore back, thank you very much. Only shrunk three uh, shirts that Wonderful. I know of. <laughs> back here with Bill Brown, is it? Brown, yeah. Right. Bill Brown is the trainer here for the Columbus Chill. I want you to look at all this stuff. I mean, with a puck coming 100 miles an hour and people slipping around and sliding and, go, you know, skating 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, falling, they got to be totally prepared. They start, you dress from the bottom uh, up, right? Correct, correct. They usually start with putting on their skates. Well, first of all, they go with, with their underwear on, of course. Then they go on with their skates and the socks and the pants and the, and the, under, and the shoulder pads and the elbow pads. Elbow pads. About every square inch of your body is covered. They even got, they have garters for their socks. Correct. Although they probably wouldn't want you to know that. <laughs> and they also got suspenders that they wear underneath all this stuff. It's the whole deal to try to keep them as safe as they can, but nonetheless, you still have some serious injuries that you've got to treat all the time in this Oh, sport. sure. Well, basically, it's just bumps and bruises and, uh, and cuts. And, and we're moving along here, and I guess you probably occasionally got somebody get their tooth knocked out. Can you guys ever put those back in? No, we, we, we send them down to the, to the dentist. We usually freeze them, and he tries to save them as best as possible. Is that, how, what's the percentage of uh, success in that? About 80 to 90 percent. Is that right? So a lot of guys get their teeth knocked out, but they, they get to keep them anyway, huh? I want you to well, do a teeth check later, Cabot. And I saw, saw him uh, wiping some, uh, some uh, atomic bomb on shoulders and so forth today. I just lost my IFB, Gail, so I'll just go ahead and take it from here. And I'm with Bob Shea. We're going to talk also a little bit. Thank you, Bill. Okay, with Bob Shea, we're going to talk a little bit about how they make this court the way they do. And if I can get Phil to come on over here, this is a fascinating process. These are, what are these frosty little pipes here? That's all distribution tubes. Uh, carries the glycol mixture. That's an antifreeze and water mixture. Uh huh. And you freeze that. Now, how many of these tubes are there actually under the rink? Mm, that's, there's quite a few. I, I never counted them, so I wouldn't know exactly. <laughs> but now, now that the ice is frozen, it will stay this way through the whole season, right? Right. As long as you keep the glycol mixture running through it and the chillers running till mid-March, and then I guess you what, you lay a, bo a wooden floor across it and an insulation pad and you can play basketball on this ice? That's, as far as I know, that's what they're going to do with it. Well, it's fascinating. That's what they can do, and it only takes them about eight hours or so to turn this from an ice rink into a basketball court. Hockey has come to Columbus, and it is a fascinating sport. Of course, Ohio State has been playing hockey for years, but a lot of us haven't really, in central Ohio, grown up with this sport. 
some of us have our preconceived notions as to what hockey is. We look at it as a very physical, very rough game, and particularly at this level, the minor league level. Well, it just may be that that thought is changing. there's anybody that really wants to stay their whole career down here uh, and that's the whole purpose of it so you can you pretty much do anything you can to get noticed if, you know whatever it takes to move off that's what you'll do the clock is ticking for prospects who check block and score in this league the ECHL is a developmental league and its players have three years to prove they're ready to move up to the IHL or NHL if they don't they're done because of that and the fact that pro scouts can be in the stands any night, it's gained the reputation as a league where the meek need not apply. Guys are out here and uh, they're out to impress every night, eh? And there's scouts in uh, the stands and they're saying, you know, I've got to go out and I've got to do something. I've got to show that I want it bad. So they're going to go out and they're going to fight just to prove that they can play in the bigger leagues because that's what they need nowadays. You need the big bruising, scoring, fighting. So it's just all out every game and uh, those guys fighting for jobs down here too. It's an image that has been enhanced by movies and folklore. Paul Newman's slap shot was loosely based around life in this league. The film shot in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, the Johnstown Chiefs in Columbus tonight. But many of the chill believe that perception is no longer correct. You know, over the years it might have got a bad rap, but I think uh, over the last two years, uh, two or three years, you can see this league is really turning into high-paced, fast hockey league. Early in its first season, Columbus has shown it won't back down from a challenge. Currently third in the league in penalty minutes, and a week ago lost their captain for the season for striking an opposing player in the face with his stick. It was a severe penalty, but the coach thinks it sent a signal that times are changing. To have him go, it hurts us in the leadership part, there's no question. Uh, but I guess the league's got to sit down and say, hey, we're trying to fix up this league, and we're trying to send players down from the NHL here to develop, and if they, this continues, uh, they're not going to send any more players down because they're all getting hurt. And one footnote, tonight's game against Johnstown, in the movie Slapshot, the coach of tonight's team, a guy by the name of Carlson, played one of the Hanson brothers. That was, were the twins with the glasses. He's going to be here tonight. So a they're, star! They're going to have a movie star here. <laughs> I'm with the uh, president, Dave Pateson, and uh, hockey, so far, so good on attendance, huh? Yeah, great. We had a sellout the first night, sold the building out in advance, as a matter of fact, which is really unusual for, for minor league sports. Is it possible that a rink like this could be used, maybe in the future, for amateur groups who need the... the, the ice time because it's you know with just Ohio State it's tough absolutely uh, we're, we're looking into all those things right now it, it's kind of a tight schedule this year because of all the building events going on including the horizon basketball team and us and mm. a number of other events so it's, it's tight on the schedule but uh, they should give our office a call or the fairgrounds a call and then see what's available okay thank you Dave and we'll be back in a minute Cabot still kind of looks like big-time wrestling <laughs> just a little. <laughs> little a little more sophisticated <laughs> From vanilla ice to the real thing. Cabot, you put on skates tonight, and I'm real proud of you because you told me that you're not the best skater. Well, what do you think? <laughs> you got a way see, to go. <laughs> see, the key here is being able to turn on a dime and go back. And they, they literally have to skate backwards as fast as they go forward, right, Terry? Well, we prefer the defenseman to do that, and there's no problem with that. Yeah, we want the defenseman to skate backwards as fast as the guys can skate forward. All right, well, let's have you spin around, Phil, because real quickly, we're going to give you a quick lesson on hockey. Now, there are six players oh, on the court I at wouldn't once, want them looking right? at me. We have our left winger. <laughs> The center iceman, the right winger over there, we have two defensemen, we have a goaltender. Being a holiday host family can be fun and a rewarding experience. You'll share meals together. Uh, this is good grub, Mr. Oglethorpe. Sing traditional holiday carols. Louie, Louie, oh, we gotta go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then time with close personal friends of the players. Lloyd Marsh. This is Muffy. Hi! And get an inside look at the professional game. So you hook him around the face and then just kind of ring it across like that. To put your family up for consideration right, home for the holidays, 1020 Charlie Bauman Drive, Columbus, Ohio, 43221. And if memory serves correct, Woody Hayes is the one who hit Charlie Bauman in the uh, Gator Bowl. Good memory. You know, 1979, I believe it was. State and local leaders to help work out the scheduling conflict at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. The uh, building was overbooked by former fair boss Billy Inman, leaving the chill homeless for five February uh, home games. Dave Summers reports even the smallest of chill fans will be heard. Dear Mr. List, 
I think Chill should stay in Columbus because I I like going to their game. I like meeting the players and getting their autographs. Since we started going to the games, we got hockey sticks to play hockey in our basement. We even made a banner. It, I was really looking forward to going to the games this year. These are the words eight-year-old Lynn Truett wrote fair manager Mark List. She's a diehard fan and can't believe her hockey team is having trouble with their home games. I felt frustrated and upset because I like them a lot and I like going to the games. Truett's letter came with 49 others and 50 phone calls, all begging List to find a way to fit the chill in the Coliseum. Mayor's Action Center, this is Ann. The mayor's hotline has been ringing off the hook. Another 50 phone calls here, 40 letters. Most of the phone calls are just asking the mayor to throw his support behind the team, but some are downright political. Listen to this. Registered voter, chill ticket holder. Planning to come to Columbus 32 evenings for chill games, we'll also be going out to dinner. But getting the chill home games will take more power than the governor or mayor have. Contracts were made and can't be broken. Conflicting events must find a way to share. If not, the only thing broken will be fan hearts. Dave Summers, News 4, Columbus. Well, you have to feel they have plenty of time to work that out, and they will. Despite last year's discovery of overpaid United Way... What do you think? Is it... Columbus Chill.